Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you a tool that I use all the time in the shop and that is my digital inclinometer. I use this all the time when it comes to cutting miters or other angles, accent pieces, um, yeah, really you, you name it. And it also goes by a digital angle gauge, digital angle finder, that sort of thing. But it's this handy little box and just to show you, you can essentially put it onto a flat surface, you can then zero it out and then you can flip it and through the magnets on this, it will stick to a saw blade. So that then you can move your saw blade and bring it right into that angle that uh, of the cut that you want to make. So really handy. Uh, I do want to note that it is plus or minus 0.2 degrees as far as accuracy. I've never run into an issue with that. I, I know some people say that that's not quite accurate enough. And uh, if you are cutting 90 degrees and trying to narrow it in for that, I do also recommend that you have a machina square to, to check that as well. Um, but the, the model that I'm using is from the Beal Tool Company. It's called the Tiltbox 2. My wife bought this for me from Lee Valley. It's been a awesome tool. I think it retails for $42 US, $52 Canadian. I'll put links in the description below. I'll also link to a few others that I uh, have been looking at on Amazon in the US and in Canada uh, that, that have good reviews and good level of accuracy. So. Anyways, in this video, I'm going to show you how to um, how, how to play with the functions on this. And regardless of the one that you get, the functions are generally the same. Uh, I will also then show you my use case on the table saw, on the miter saw, and on the band saw. So uh, without further ado, let's get to it. So just before I get to the functions of the digital inclinometer, I just want to point out that while these tools all generally have these gauges on them for you to dial in a specific angle, the accuracy is generally hit and miss. Um, the ability to then calibrate it is also generally inconsistent between tools. So while these can generally be pretty good at getting you pretty close, I generally rely on the digital inclinometer to then dial it into um, the exact angle that I'm looking for. Okay, so before we get to the complete use case on the table side, first of all, I wanna go through the functions on this. And it's generally pretty basic and almost all uh, digital inclinometers function the same way. So if we turn this on, we will see that it's not perfectly zero right now. And that's because I would have had this calibrated to a different um, position of level to the earth. And while it's on a completely flat cast iron surface right now and held down nicely by magnets, again, almost all of these are the same, we see that's 0.5 degrees. So what I can do is I can zero this out. And because my workpiece is gonna be riding along this cast iron surface, we can then put this on the table saw blade and it should be close to 90, might not be exactly perfect. You need to avoid the teeth. Oh, there we go. So it is perfectly 90 right now. And let's say that I wanted to make a cut of, um, 22 and a half degrees. So that is 67 and a half that I want to rotate this to. So let's get this guard off. Get that back on there. So again, back to 90. And then you can just easily rotate this. To 67. <laughs> This table saw is a little finicky, but there we go. So now I'm not too worried about uh, the tenth of a degree on this. So again, dialing it into pretty close and within that like, for me, I don't think too much of it. Like even if a half degree with most of my woodworking is generally fine. So we've got this dialed in and now what I can do is I can pull out my sled or uh, miter gauge and make my cut and get that, that perfect angle. So that's the use case of the digital inclinometer on the table saw. So now let's take a look at the miter saw. So on my miter saw, and this is the Bosch Glide, uh, we have the gauge at the back for cutting um, our bevels. So again, pretty good level of accuracy, but let's get in a little closer. You can see that it's definitely a little hard to just completely dial it in, although it does have those stops for 22.5 degrees, 33.9, so very common ones there. I guess those are not stops, just more so highlighted elements. So uh, anyways, I'll, I'll show you how we use the how I use the inclinometer to dial this in. I don't generally need it for 45, because this locks in pretty well with that, but uh, if I want to cut another 22.5 degree, let's see how I do it. 
All right, so now what we'll do is we'll put the inclinometer down on where our workpiece will be, and we can see that's reading 1.4 degrees. So we can zero that out so that we're referencing this properly. We can attach it to the blade, and it's pretty close to 90, just 0.1 degree off. And then if we It's a, a heavy saw to be tilting, so we can get it to the 22 and a half degrees, which is 67.5 on there. And there we go. Pretty much bang on right there. And we can lock it down and we're good to go. So the inclinometer gives that um, really accurate result, which really kind of helps you manage the setting on the saw itself. Now let's take a look at the bandsaw. So the bandsaw is a bit of a different beast and we have this gauge on the bottom, which is not all that accurate. doesn't give you really that capability of dialing it in. So I'll show you how I use the inclinometer to get this perfectly flat. And we're gonna do this a slightly different way where I'm actually gonna mount the inclinometer to the bandsaw blade or kind of just lightly hold it there because it doesn't have the the strength on this size blade if i had a larger blade in it would um, but i can essentially then zero it to that blade and then i can put the inclinometer on the cast iron surface and then what i can do is i can dial in the cast iron so there we go Again, try to get it as close to 90 as we reasonably can. Generally 0 0.1, 0 0.2 degree is going to be more than sufficient. So there we go. So we've dialed this in. Again, sometimes it does get a little confused with what's upside down and what's not, but that's how I use this on the bandsaw. I don't generally do angled cuts on the bandsaw. It's almost always flat, but when I do take this apart to clean it or put in a new blade, I do like to make sure that I'm getting my 90 degree between the blade and the top. So there we go. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, this has been uh, my coverage of digital inclinometers in general. This wasn't meant to be a review of the Tilt Box uh, 2. Uh, it's a very handy tool to have around. It really helps you dial in your saws and, and your blades to that, that very close uh, level. If you are just looking for 90, again, the machinist squares do a really good job helping you dial that in. Uh, a few things I would say is always to make sure that you are looking to make sure it's not attached to the teeth of the blades because that can throw it out of whack. Always make sure that you zero it out to the surface where your workpiece will be riding. And uh, yeah, check out the description below where I'll link to a few of them. I'll, I'll link to this one at Lee Valley, but I'll also put in a few to um, a few on Amazon. So thanks for watching and see you in another video soon.